This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Stick around to the end of the video for a special offer they're making available through my channel. The Grab and Go Superlicious Mega Morphological Food Base from Suckage Farms. The universe's number four sustenance resource just got a whole lot juicier with Platinum Slurp Plus, Nutra Minerals, Power Booster Edge 20 Million. Anatomically reconfigurable nano clusters simulate a virtually unlimited number of foods and beverages in your mouth and straight into your stomach for maximum satisfaction with exemplary convenience. With tastes, flavors, and textures like beef, chicken, corn, chocolate mousse, hard candy, chili bacon burger, sunny man, chives, baked seed, parmesan cheese, vanilla swirl, La John donut, Salisbury steak, pasta paisano, buffalo banana wings, horse biscuits, pineapple pizza poppers, lamb's flea, poutine, wonton, fecal surprise, cucumber shit water, nose broth, and literally trillions more. more, more. Now that's good flavor. Okay, so let's keep this one short and sweet because that's exactly what Journey to the Savage Planet is, short and sweet. <laughs> Our first task is to define what the hell Journey to the Savage Planet actually is. By the way, I'll refer to it as Savage Planet from here on, just to save time. Savage Planet is not what I expected. When I saw the trailers, I kind of got some Subnautica vibes. I could see that we were able to collect resources, craft things. There was a big focus on exploration. The environments looked so crazy and otherworldly. There was a hint of long gone alien races shrouded in mystery and I had to uncover their secrets, etc, etc. Given that I just played Subnautica and I absolutely loved that, I was really excited for Savage Planet and eager to jump in when I received my review code. What I would soon learn is that this really isn't anything like Subnautica or even a survival game at all. It's its own thing entirely and it's very well made and it's very enjoyable, but its ambitions are far more limited than you might assume by looking at the striking visual palette. Savage Planet is far closer to Banjo, Kazooie and Mario than it is Subnautica or No Man's Sky. Yet Yes, you do collect resources and craft things here, but the resource collection process is sort of an organic side product of just playing the game. You never really need to go out and farm for resources. The tech tree you shuttled through is less about building survival tools or equipment, and more about upgrading your suit with Metroidvania style power-ups. You can't build any structures or anything that automatically gathers resources for you, but you can increase your boosted jump to a quadruple jump, and you can upgrade your gloves allowing you to hang handle explosive, electric, or acidic plants. There's also the big matter of game length. Now, when I looked at this, I kind of, as I said, got Subnautica vibes, and I was like, ah, oh, maybe this is gonna be like a 40 hour adventure, and I, that, that would be great. No. This game takes about six hours to finish, and then there's the completionist collection stuff after that will probably take you about another two to three hours. All told, if you do absolutely everything in this game, you are probably gonna be entirely done with it in about 10 hours. I think that's fine, by the way. I think this is a cute, clever six hour ride that I generally enjoyed, but you have to go into this thing expecting six hours of Metroidvania fueled platforming and not 60 hours of Subnautica or No Man's Sky themed building and exploration. If you're down for that, then let's talk about why I actually think this is a pretty decent game. Savage Planet shines in its opening moments and really its entire first act. The instant you crash land on this mysterious new planet, you're immediately alive to the comic stylings of this garish cartoon rendered late stage capitalist dystopia. Corporations are in control of everything because of course they are, and you work for the fourth most respected space exploration company in the galaxy. Your mission is to find planets inhabitable for humanity, only things have gone wrong because of course they have, and now you need to survive the local flora and fauna uncover the planet's secrets and somehow get home. The thing I liked most about Savage Planet is that it's actually pretty funny. Beat scraps, fat and gristle finding its way to your trash? What a waste! Or even worse, the toilet? Disgusting! Put a smile on your face using your meat waste with Meat Buddy, the reconstituted cuddly companion from Slimo. Just take your animal-based waste products, rotten flesh, and laboratory-thrown proteins and simply toss in the hopper. Choose the number and type of appendages, and in just four short clychefs, your new best friend will emerge, ready to cuddle. 
Beat Buddy, the Snugly Playmate from Slimo. I thought it's whole like, ha ha ha, corporations, am I right guys? Was a little strained at first, but as it continued to kind of ratchet up and escalate the joke, I found myself enjoying it more and more. There's around a dozen or so of these videos available to you doled out at specific milestones, and they always provide a real treat. They get a bit repetitive sometimes as the game feels the need to replay them every time you return to your ship, but you can turn them off with a press of a button, which is handy. I even came to like my little AI companion who reminded me of kind of a mix between Claptrap from Borderlands and Failsafe from Destiny 2, only actually funny. Face. This creature created armor from amber to protect itself. Let's kill it. She peppers your adventure with some pretty decent comedy, and I rarely found her annoying, which is something that a lot of these, like, you know, AI sidekicks, whatever, eventually end up doing. Being annoying, I mean. Looking at you, Cortana. Oh, I love you, Cortana, you're the best. Except for Halo 5. But it's not just the gags and the writing that make this game funny. The entire thing seems to be served up with a smirk. Its world design is so outlandish and ridiculous that it can't but evoke a smile. The enemy design is basically adorable, and the very first mission you have to do to collect carbon is essentially the equivalent of forcing the player to club kittens. There's a whimsical quality to Savage Planet that pours from its every secret field orifice. This is not a long game by any means, but it's one that's going to give you plenty of chuckles and smiles over its six hour playtime. And even if the game offered me nothing else, I'd be glad I played it. But it does actually offer you other things, lots of other things in fact. I mean, just take a look at this title card. This was the peak moment in my entire Savage Planet journey because it spoke to my imagination as a video game world explorer. Here I was crash landed on this planet expecting to find nothing and now we see this gigantic sky reaching alien tower and I just immediately know that I'm gonna have to climb that thing. In this moment I was like, yes, this is it, this is my jam, I'm definitely going to love this game. The exploration starts out rather strongly as you get to grips with the first Arctic inspired biome. There's a weird Hendrix style plant that gives me hallucinations when I get close to it and confident in the flaccidity of the threat posed by the local wildlife, I give one of them a quick shot with my blaster. Turns out this little one was different from the others. Huh. Might want to get that. In this first act, these moments of discovery and surprise come thick and fast as literally everything is new. The floor drops out for me here and I honestly don't know what to do with these weird floating squid things. Like, are they bad? Uh, should I shoot them? What's Oh my god, yep, they're shooting me. Yep, time to shoot them back. Let's, let's do this thing. As we transition into the second biome, I was reminded of Subnautica or Outer Wilds or No Man's Sky. I felt like I was going to see and explore radically diverse spaces that leave me awestruck when I encounter them. It took me a little while to realize that this wasn't quite the case, but we'll come back to that point when we talk about Act 2. Exploration is aided in large part by your two scanners. One of them is a quick pulse, which I didn't find particularly helpful to be honest. The other is your visor, which provides this awesome looking wireframe view of the world, highlighting new things you haven't yet scanned with your scanner thingy. You have quest markers guiding you throughout your journey. A quest log lists both primary and secondary quests, and you can track whichever one you like, making navigation and orientation fairly simple. The early goals are to scan and collect some specific minerals that are needed to craft upgrades for your suit. And when you do that, you can then access new areas, allowing you to continue on to access even more areas to collect more minerals, etc., etc. Act one kind of culminates in your first major combat showdown, an encounter with a lizard thing that does this kind of sonic spin and whose only weakness is the backside of his glowing tail. You dodge, he stuns himself a few times, you kill him, and then two more of them appear and you need to now kill two of the same thing but at the same time this grants you some alien alloy which is the primary throttling currency stopping you from upgrading all of your gear at once and once you've got it you've actually kind of experienced most of what savage planet has to offer with the rest of it being variations on a theme i guess it's time to talk about what i would consider act two
So let me start this section by saying that I think this is a good game. I like this game. If you like what you see and you know, it all makes sense to you, I think you should buy this game. I'm saying all that stuff, right? It's just not a great game. So in this section, I'm going to explain why that is and you can go in with eyes open. Okay, here we go. I think the primary goal of an experience like this is to evoke a sense of wonder and awe at the environments you're exploring. And I think Savage Planet struggles to deliver in this regard. You are overawed in those opening moments, but what you'll soon come to realize is that there isn't a lot of variation in the biomes that you sort of might have been looking for when you kind of booted this thing up. Too many of them just look too similar to each other. And as I look back over my footage, I kind of struggle to tell certain sections of the map apart from others. This is especially the case in the last third of the game, where pretty much all the regions are just floating rock island thingies. I think there's a general challenge with the way you engage these spaces as well, as the exploration loop is kind of broken by the over-reliance on markers. I've commented earlier that I started to dislike games or game mechanics that really clearly spell things out for me. And this is very much what Savage Planet is. There's always a map marker telling you exactly where to go. And later there's a visor upgrade telling you exactly where a lot of the game secrets are hidden. There are other secrets that you have to dig around for the old fashioned way, but given how many things there are to collect in this game, you sort of get tired of searching for absolutely everything. That's a really important point, I think, like this idea of collection exhaustion. Here you are constantly collecting basic materials like carbon and silicon, you're collecting these orange goo things that upgrade your health and stamina, you're collecting alien artifacts, rare minerals, alien alloys, the list goes on. This is why I said the game is similar to platformers like Banjo-Kazooie or Mario. A huge portion of the game loop is just collecting all of the things, which I think is fine if you're into that, but it doesn't personally motivate me as a player. Within each of these spaces, there could have been different design objectives that force the player to interact with them in different, more interesting ways, with the focus being on the collectathon, spaces feel jam-packed with things to pilfer rather than with things to play with. <laughs> So after that first act, the game really settles into what I would consider to be a kind of repetitive and predictable rhythm. It's always about building the next upgrade, which means finding the next rare mineral, which is guarded by the next rare monster. Follow the marker, fight the monster, build the thing, rinse and repeat about five times until game is over. Combat is a real sticking point here as well. Lower level enemies eventually get some sort of shell that needs to be popped by using one of your upgrades. Higher level enemies are almost always invulnerable except for their little weak spots so the game is always about just maneuvering around to hit these spots which can be quite cumbersome at times combat isn't bad it's just super simple and the only way it's made more challenging is through some design choices that aren't particularly fun when you complete the last boss of the game you dropped back into the world to mop up any remaining quests collect all of the final things on the collectathon and then head home i'd call this act three of the game but to be honest i just wasn't motivated to collect like the remaining 80 orange glob things by following map markers around for another two or three hours. It just didn't interest me. This isn't the game per se though, like you don't have to do this stuff, but if you're a completionist, then this is what's in store for you. Now, one important point that I haven't mentioned is that you can play through this entire game co-op. I'm gonna be doing a playthrough of it with my brother next week, and I'm looking forward to that because I think that doing this co-op would make all the difference. There isn't a lot to sink your teeth into here, so being able to shoot the shit with a friend while all this is going down would be great. There aren't too many games like this and fewer still that are co-op. If you're looking to fill a solid six hours with a friend or a family member or even your kid, then this is perfect. In fact, I think this is the perfect game to play with a kid at your side, as I'm sure the stylized visuals and the lightweight combat will hold plenty of appeal to younger audiences, while still providing enough engaging gameplay to keep adults attentive as well. So that's Journey to the Savage Planet. I hope I've made my point here, but just in case I haven't, I'm going to make it again, right? I think this is a good video game. I think it is a well-made product. It runs beautifully on PC, by the way, uh, really well. Some of the control mappings are kind of counterintuitive, but I'm sure they'll patch those soon. Um, it's coming out on PS4, on Xbox, and it's exclusive to the Epic Games Store. Epic Games Bad, Epic Games Bad. It's a good game, guys. It's just, as I said, it, it's six hours. It's short and sweet. It's not gonna like blow your mind or change your world. It's probably not your game of the year, 
But if you want to knock out six fun hours on your own or with a friend, uh, you'll smile a few times, you'll have a good time, you'll put it down, you move on to other things. And that to me is great. And I like that stuff. And that's Savage Planet. Now, one extra thing I'd recommend to you before you go is Squarespace. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, custom website, why do I need that? That's, that's, that's dumb. I don't, I don't need a custom website, right? Maybe, but maybe you do. Maybe you want to start up your own gaming blog so you can put your ideas somewhere where others can see them. Maybe you have a hobby you just want to share with the world. Maybe you want to start making some money off that hobby by selling your custom art or your... Uh, Paint hand painted clogs. Maybe that's what you do, man. You make hand painted clogs and you sell them online and you make your million bucks that way. It's that, do that. Clogs. Whatever it is you want to do in life, a website is probably going to help you and Squarespace provide the best tools to make that possible. Squarespace provides simple, easy to use design templates, allowing you to create custom websites in just minutes. And if you want to go the whole hog, you can add in advanced features as well. I'm talking stuff like a comment section so you can hear from your readers or your customers and start building a community. I'm talking back end tools that allow you to manage inventory and streamline your bookkeeping. Almost anything you'll need to conduct your business online, Squarespace can do it. It's very easy to get started. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash skill up to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching it. The hottest slime forums in the galaxy chat with the most seductive soft bodies in space for a discreet and nebulous encounter. No bones about it. Call 1-900-BLOB-LOVE. Just 2500 for the first minute and 42000 for each additional minute. Call the blob line now. Additional transplantation rates of blood must be over 622.